Hello, hello everyone and welcome to episode 48 of the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast. I'm Christine. And I'm Sam. And this week we had to, well actually just Sunday. Just yesterday. Which is yesterday in our world. We had to say goodbye to our niece Lucy who had been staying with us for two weeks. It was a big bummer. It was. It was was so much fun having her around. Yeah, I was sad to see her go. We did have a really good time having her here and taking her to VegFest and her uh, theater camp, helping her practice for her theater camp performances. It was was a really good time. Yep. It was awesome. I always enjoy having her here. We'll be doing it again. Yeah. Next Just year. About one year from now. Next yep. year. We'll Absolutely. Be doing it again. And it's not like we won't be seeing Lucy soon. We're going to be visiting her uh, when we head to the Pittsburgh Veg Fest uh, in, in just a couple of weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, we said goodbye to, to Lucy. Um, so, I thought we would share a little bit um, about the foods that we gave her, mm-hmm. uh, being that she was a, is not a vegan, um, but knows when she stays here, we're going to feed her vegan food. Correct. So some of the things that we fed her uh, were, I made tacos. Yes. We had a taco night. Actually, we had two taco nights. We did have two taco nights. And, and in both cases, you used a crumble. I used a, a yeah, a store-bought crumble. Uh, the first time I made them, I used the um, Morningstar Farms crumbles mm-hmm. and seasoned them, you know, like you would uh, taco filling. Sure. And um, she liked those. She did. Very yeah. much. She thought they were a little spicy. Yeah, that... <clears throat> because that is um those cr- particular crumbles i think are like a chorizo, chorizo. Yeah. yeah um and she is um you uh, no no frills taco girl she she wants yes. the taco meat mm-hmm. cheese, cheese and lettuce and as she put it lettuce <laughs> yes lettuce <laughs> yeah so yeah just cheese and lettuce that's all she wants yep. on her taco yep um, it's just like all she wants on her cheeseburger is ketchup and cheese yeah she's a simple girl very simple with simple tastes indeed um so the second time i made them i used the upton foods crumbles which were actually flavored uh italian right but You know, once I add cumin and chili powder and your typical taco seasoning spices. It still came across. You can't tell that they were originally flavored Italian. No. No. No, you definitely couldn't. I didn't know that. So you fooled me too. Oh, I did. Yeah. Oh. I didn't know that you were using the Upton stuff. Yeah, I I totally use the Upton stuff. I love that Upton stuff. It's good. So good. I like the texture of the Upton stuff and it's really good on pizza. Mm Mm-hmm. It's uh. That's why I bought it, because I thought we would make pizza with yeah, it. Yeah, it's a seitan-based product, and it comes in, like, a block. But then when you open the block, it, you can just crumble it. Mm-hmm. And it's it it crumbles like a sausage yeah. would, and it, it is really good on a pizza. Fabulous on pizza, actually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what else did we feed her? Um, well, Lucy, as you, may have, as you may remember from our VegFest episode... Lucy loves a chicken nugget. Oh, right. So we did make her a, a couple of different chicken nuggets. We made her the Wegmans ones, yes, right? Yes, we the did. Don't be chicken. The don't be chicken. And um, the, I don't know what brand it is that makes those uh, dino, we call them dino bites, but they're dino, dino buddies. Dino buddies. I think it's yum foods or it something. It might be like yum, that. yum foods. Yeah. yeah. And they're <clears throat> in, you know, in the shape of various dinosaurs. Yes, they're very is, cute, which is fun. Yeah. And, and so she liked both of those. Yeah, she liked both. She she hasn't. She seems to have not met a vegan nugget that she doesn't like. It's true. Yeah, she yeah, hasn't. I keep every time we give her a different one. I'm like, ooh, I hope she likes these. Yeah. No, I think that as long as they're kind of crispy and are seasoned, yeah. reasonably well, she's gonna take to them. Yeah. She hasn't met one she doesn't like yet. Yeah. And at almost every meal, I gave her broccoli because I'm like, this kid needs vegetables. It's and I know her she, favorite vegetable. Yeah, she loves broccoli. Loves broccoli. And then I think towards the end of her stay, I'm like, are there any other vegetables you like besides broccoli? She's like, yes. I like green, green beans. beans. I like peas. Peas. Oh, I did give her corn. We got fresh corn from our farm share. Corn isn't a vegetable. Uh, oh, right. It's a starch. Yeah, it's a grain. But... I served it as a vegetable. <laughs> as many people do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had corn on the cob, which I had to take off the cob because Lucy has, has braces, braces now. And can't and do so, the, yeah, can't, can't do the cob. Can't do the cob corn. Um, but she seemed to like that. Yes. And then um, another thing that I made for her and Sam one evening is actually going to be our recipe of the week. And this recipe comes from not a cookbook, 
but a blog post that we actually collaborated on. It was uh, we made a cor- we had a collab we made a collaboration. <laughs> we, had, we collaborated we, with. Thank you. That that mm-hmm. sounds better. You got it. We collaborated with uh, author Sarah Woodard on a blog post that she did, and um, the blog post. And you can find this recipe yourself. The blog post, if I had it up in front of me, I could tell you, is titled A Full Day of Vegan Food Your Kids Will Love. And you can find this on Sarah's website, which is Sarah Woodard, authoress.wordpress.com. So if you just search uh, Sarah Woodard, authoress, go to her website, go to the blog page, you'll find it there. And so we submitted um, a full day's worth of recipes. And one of the recipes we made was the dinner recipe off of this blog post. Yes. That I came up with. And the recipe is titled the Use Your Noodle Cheesy Pizza Noodle Bake. Yes. But I made uh, an adjustment. I didn't use vegan pepperoni, mainly because we were out of vegan pepperoni. Right. Yeah. Can't I use the pepperoni we don't have. No. So I used meatballs instead. And this is a really simple pasta bake. I used rigatoni. Mm-hmm. Um, I used pasta, a jarred pasta sauce. Mm-hmm. Uh, make sure your jarred pasta sauce is vegan because some of them, they sneak Parmesan in there. Yeah, even, lots of them actually yeah. sneak, sneak milk and Parmesan. Yeah, in. so you always yep. want to check those, even if it's a vegetable-based yep. sauce. Some, always got Sometimes check. they sneak it in on you. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, so I used a jarred sauce. I used Morningstar Farms vegan meatballs. And what else did I do? Oh, um, vegan mozzarella. Oh, yeah. So which, ve- which vegan mozzarella did you use? Because it was pretty sh- melty. Yeah, it was the BioLife. BioLife shreds? Yeah. Yeah, and that's they the do, way to go. They melt pretty well in a, in a bake situation like that. And I don't use a lot of it. I found that if you use too much vegan cheese, it gets gummy or it, it's a it weird can. consistency. It can. Yeah. So I used, you know, I don't know, maybe a half a cup. Right. Well, we all know that vegan cheese has not perfected the meltability right part yeah. of, of cheese yet yeah and i think i also used some of the follow your heart like shaker cheese like parmesan like parmesan yeah, yeah. always a good like idea sprinkle cheese mm-hmm. that's what my family always called it sprinkle cheese <laughs> who wants sprinkle cheese i'd never heard that till i met your family <laughs> <laughs> it's like magic sprinkles magic dust anyway she liked that um and then that one went over um pretty pretty good oh well yeah because for her that's just spaghetti and meatballs yeah. it's just a different shape yeah yeah. R- rigatoni is well, that's my favorite. I, it's it's a universal awesome thing. Universally awesome is rigatoni. <laughs> universally awesome. Yeah, maybe that's what I should have titled the recipe: the universally awesome pasta bake. Well, you can make another one. You can make another recipe that is the universally awesome pasta. I bake. could. I yeah, could. could. Yeah. So you can uh, get that recipe for free for yourself. You can get a full day of kid-friendly recipes uh, at that blog post at sarahwoodardauthoress.wordpress.com. Um, and then just go to her blog page and scroll down. It'll be in there. And that was a that was a fun collaboration. It really was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sarah Woodard, if you do not know, is a award-winning children's author. And has a lot of resources on her website about how to approach children uh, about not just veganism um, or farm animal situations or anything that, but all sorts of, it runs the gamut, to how to approach your children with, with hard to, to right, discuss with, topics. With diffi- difficult to discuss topics. Yeah. So, I mean, that includes, you know, race and gender yeah. and sexuality and all of those things and her a whole mission is essentially to um, create the next generation of activists. Yep, exactly. Which is pretty amazing. Yeah, she's a really cool person. That she is. Yep. Um, so, oh, uh, I wanted to talk about breakfast, where we went to breakfast yesterday. Oh, yeah. You so, want to talk, talk about that? It, gladly. I feel so, like I'm just talking all the time. Well, because you are. <laughs> I'll shut up and let you talk. Tell us what we did for breakfast yesterday, Sam. All right. So uh, Lucy had her final show uh, at theater camp on Saturday afternoon. And afterwards, we all went out to dinner at a Japanese restaurant near us. But the exciting part of our uh, family gathering was breakfast on Sunday morning. We went to a local place right in the center of town in Fredonia, New York, called Domus Fair. And Domus Fair was a 
favorite place of ours before we went vegan. Um, they do some really wonderful, wonderful food, uh, really home style cooking. And Christine was just uh, mad for their eggs benedict back yeah, in the day. They kind of it's uh, Greek leaning yes. f- food, Greek leaning, Greek or Mediterranean. Yep. And so um, recently they've started adding some vegan options to their menu and they have a vegan chili and they also have the wonderful thing that we got, which was their vegan breakfast burrito. I was thrilled to hear that they had that. It's so good. And it's so, so, so good. Um, So in their vegan breakfast burrito, they have a scrambled tofu Mm -hmm. with all kinds of vegetables, peppers, onions, broccoli, tomatoes mushrooms yes some zucchini the mushrooms were prepared really well too they were yeah they were because i forgot to exclude the mushrooms no they were good they they gave the they gave the burrito a really good umami they really did yeah yeah so i'm glad that i forgot they sear them really well so they're not like you know people that have issues with mushrooms it's usually a textural thing and you wouldn't with these they were nice yep Absolutely. And so Christine had the brilliant idea to add to her breakfast burrito uh, Domus Fair's falafel. Yeah, they make a good falafel. They make so. a very nice falafel. And yeah, so I said, would it be possible for you to toss a couple of falafel in that burrito too? And she's like, oh yeah. I'm like, awesome. Yes. And so uh, they did put falafel into Christine's burrito and uh, we shared. So we each had half a burrito with the falafel and half a burrito without the falafel. Yeah, because I did want to taste what it would was like in its original form. Right. And even though the falafel was a stroke of genius, I have to say, it really was. <laughs> like props to you because yeah, that was a great idea. Thanks. Um, I think I actually preferred the burrito without the falafel just because it was lighter. It was definitely lighter without the falafel. Yeah, the falafel made it a little bit heavy. Um, It was definitely a more filling meal. I was really hungry. So I would recommend if you are in our area ever and go to Domus Fair in Fredonia, New York. Um, And if you're really hungry, add the falafel to the breakfast burrito. Yes. If you're just normally hungry, don't (laughs) because you may end up being uncomfortably full or you will regrettably not be able to finish. Yeah, you might have to take the other half home with you. Yes. And uh, just as an aside, the burrito is served with your choice of hash browns, home fries Mm -hmm. or fruit. Yeah. And we each went with an iteration of potatoes. I did the hash browns and you did the home fries. I did home fries. And they were very good. They were good. My home fries were... I love a good potato. Oh, yeah. So good. Yeah. Because sometimes you get home fries and they're either, they're not cooked enough. Right. These were perfect. Yeah. And yeah. same with the hash browns. They were crispy but not greasy. Yeah. Um, they were shredded really, really well. Yeah. Nice and light. was very happy with those. Their food there is really good. It is. And so because of this offering that they have, Christine and I have now decided that Domus Fair is going to become our Sunday morning thing. Yeah. After we volunteer... volunteer. Volunteer at the shelter. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah, after we volunteer at the shelter, we used to go to a restaurant here in town called Upper Crust, but they are no longer open on Sundays. So this could be a, a new tradition. Yes. So we're thinking Get about making this our, our new tradition, uh, getting Domus Fair's beautiful vegan breakfast burrito on Sunday mornings. And we also got to leave them um, a restaurant card. Now, this is something that I got from Vegan Outreach uh, when I was registering for their mentor program and all of that good stuff. Um, I checked out their store, and one of the things they were offering were restaurant cards. And it very simply said, I ate here because of your vegan options. Mm-hmm. Which is a brilliant idea. It's so brilliant. And you just slip it in the, in, in with, with your check when your you, check when when you pay. pay. And, you know, so it gives restaurant owners and chefs impetus mm-hmm. to perhaps create more vegan options. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I just think that's absolutely brilliant. And I can't believe... I never thought of that. Yeah. So we thought it was so brilliant that we decided we should probably have our own Compassion and Cucumbers restaurant cards. And so I've designed some and they should be here this week. Super cool. Which will be um, fun. They'll be fun to hand out at restaurants that aren't fully vegan, but that are offering vegan options. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So really, really excited about that. Me too. Yeah. That's fun. I I also want to... um, Make like cards for restaurants to put in their windows, Mm -hmm. you know, that that they have vegan options. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Yeah, we should do that as well. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And I think most restaurants would be willing to do that. I mean, why not advertise it, you know? Right. If you do have, if that option is available, I mean, the more visible you make it, the better. Yeah. You know, I know I don't like having to scan through a menu to see if there's anything that I can possibly eat in your average restaurant. Yeah. So that little sign in the window or on the door that says we have vegan options. Yeah, like if you're with fantastic. Um, some non-vegan people and they're like, let's go here and you've never been there and they don't have a menu online or whatever, you can't, you know, pre-plan. Right. Um, like we usually do, we try to, uh, if, you know, walk out up to the door. If you see a sign in their window that says we have vegan options, you'll be like, oh, yay. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? So, yeah, I think we should start a campaign. Just yeah. Start right around here yeah, and head to all of our local restaurants and say, hey, we really appreciate that you have vegan options. We've got this sign. Yeah, here's would a card mind, you can put in your window. Would you mind putting this in your window? You know, make it free to the the establishment. Oh, yeah, it's totally free. Totally free. Yeah. You know, not uh, not anything we would ask them to buy or anything. Just yeah. say, hey, we'd really love for you to put this card in your window so it makes it easier for us vegans to, to know where and where we can and can't eat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah super so cool. Great idea. I'm going to work on those. Um, okay. Uh, I guess that's all I wanted to talk about, about things we were doing with Lucy and oh, yeah. the family and all that stuff. It was so fun. And, um, Lucy, if you're listening, we miss you. We had yes, such we a do. good time. I think even Carl misses you. Yeah. He, yeah. I asked him yesterday and he did say yes. Oh, he misses Lucy. He misses Lucy. <laughs> Carl is one of our cats. So. Yeah. <laughs> and he's a babe. And he, babe. he really liked Lucy. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to talk about what we did yesterday. Okay. Well, so after we went to Domus Fair for breakfast and saw all of our family members off, Mm -hmm. um, and we came back to a, for the first time in two weeks, quiet house. It was so quiet. It was amazing. It was so quiet that both of us felt like we were going to take a nap. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) I'm like, okay, I have to do something or I'm going to fall asleep. So I was, I was doing some knitting yesterday afternoon um but after that we it, mid-afternoon we headed out to the vegan center uh in yep. tonawanda yeah um for the first time we'd never yeah, been we, up there before we had had not i don't know how many times we said to ourselves we got to get up there we got to get up there we finally managed to get up there they did they were doing a pop-up market yep um, all day yesterday we got there when did we get there we got there four thirty, quarter to five yeah, about that. Maybe quarter of five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I wish we had gone a little earlier. So do I. Because um, it was only going until six. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the vendors were kind of ready to wrap it up. Sure. You know. Yeah. And our main impetus for heading to this pop-up market um, at the Vegan Center mm-hmm. was a pop-up event for Blooming Wild. Yeah. And Blooming Wild is um, the newest project of Marissa and Jamie of... Yeah, formerly of Big Mood. Of Big Mood fame, mm-hmm. it's, yes. It's their new venture. It's their new venture. Mm-hmm. And so they were doing a pop-up focusing on vegan fish and chips mm-hmm. and fish tacos. Yeah. So we pre-ordered one of each because, of course, you know, we have to sample all the things. I want all the things. Yeah, got to have all the things. And so we went up yesterday afternoon to test... This new vegan fish. Yeah. And it was? I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, my gosh. The tacos, which I tried first because we were going back and forth, like, trying yes. each other's things. The taco that I tried first, I was uh, super surprised to find it really dill forward. Mm-hmm. And Marissa, thank you so much. We are huge fans of anything dill. Yes. So that was an awesome call. It really was. Yeah, that, that... And unusual in a fish taco. Yeah, that dressing that you make, um, that like dill dress... It's almost like a tzatziki. It's almost like a dill tzatziki. Well, it, it was kind of somewhere between a dill tzatziki and a dill tartar sauce. Tartar sauce, yeah. Because it had that bit of tang. It did have a tang. That tartar sauce has, um, but it wasn't cucumbery like tzatziki. Right. Even though the consistency was similar. Yeah. Yeah. And the fish, super crunchy breading. It was... Mm. It was really good. Yes, and it was a tofu based yeah. uh fish. The center was definitely tofu. Yep. And the breading was fabulously crunchy, again, not greasy, not terribly salty. Uh-huh. Um and along with it came some of Marissa's favorite famous mac and cheese. 
Yes, this is a, a, a different uh, iteration of her mac and cheese. You said it's a nut-free recipe. Oh, cool. Yeah, and it was really good. It was very good. Yeah. Very and good. And there was also a uh, slaw. Oh, that which came I was it. so happy about. Because we all know. Sam's a sucker, sucker for a slaw. Sucker for a good slaw. That's right. And yeah. so I was very pleased with the slaw. Um, I think I ate the majority of the slaw. And it also was very dill forward, yeah. which I appreciated. There was also a really nice lemony tang to yeah. it that I just thought was fantastic. Yeah. Lemon and dill is right up there on my list of flavor combinations. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the, it was fantastic. The fish and chips um, was a couple of pieces of the breaded, I'm doing air quotes, fish, mm-hmm. tofu based fish. And then uh, it was they were laying on a bed of the most perfectly fried French fries. They were. Yeah. The most perfectly fried French fries ever. They were super crunchy. Um, they were good. But nice and fluffy in the middle. My only issue with the French fries is they were a little oversalted, I oh, felt. Were, did you think so? I did. Okay. I did. It didn't stop me from eating them. <laughs> no, we ate them all. Mind you, we ate them all. <laughs> yeah, there, was, there were no fries going to waste. Absolutely not. Yeah. But they were a little bit salty for me. Oh. But that was the that's the only minor and let yeah. me say minor criticism I yeah, can offer. I didn't, the rest I didn't of the find, meal was gorgeous. I didn't find that with the salt, so you know, it's just a matter of taste, I suppose. Yep. Yeah, so um yeah, success. That meal was really good. Oh, it was. It was just fantastic. Yeah. So um we are very much looking forward to Blooming Wild's next pop up, yeah. uh, which I believe is happening at Long Weekend, and I'm not right. sure of the date. I'm going to have to uh, do a little more research on that. But yeah, and I can put it. I'll put it in the show notes. That'd be awesome. I'll I'll link everything in the show notes if you want to know where they are and what they're doing. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Because we we've, we've definitely got to follow them. Yeah, I want to support them and what they're Big doing. Time. Um, so who else did we? What else did we do? Who else did we meet? Well, this was awesome because we. Totally unexpectedly, okay, and I don't know what I, I don't know what kind of preconceived notion I had in my head about the pop-up market. I don't know. Maybe I kind of forgot it was a pop-up market and I just thought it was a pop-up restaurant event. Yeah. But, you know, we walked into the vegan center for the first time and we're in the gift shop in the front. It Uh was very cute. And then after filling out a survey that Marcy asked us to fill out, Uh uh, we headed in towards the back of the building and there were all of these lovely vendors. There were maybe about a half dozen Uh uh, vendors back there. And so we got to meet some really fabulous new people who have some really fabulous up and coming businesses. Yeah. And so we're going to talk about a couple of them. Yeah. I just, I just love what Marcy is doing there and she's creating a space for these new vegan entrepreneurs yeah. to share their wares and their food. And um, and then she also puts on classes on you yeah. know, starting a business and all that stuff. So she's definitely feeding into the community up there. Absolutely. And, and it's growing and growing. Yeah. And so uh, the first pair that we ran into uh, were... Uh, Jesse and Jenny from Radical Foods. Okay. Yeah. And Radical Foods right now has uh, two offshoots, Radical Dough and Radical Sauces, yeah. I think it is. Hang on. Let me find my oh, web page. They didn't oh, have- yes. Radical Sauces and Dressings, but they didn't, they didn't have, have any those- sauces and dressings. I know. And I was reading what they were and I'm like, ooh, I wish they had. Well, I checked the website and it says that they're going to be available in late 2022. Oh, okay. So, Sometime in the not too distant future. And maybe they'll have them at the. Uh, I think there's one ha- around Halloween. Yeah, gonna, yeah, October 29th, happening. I think. Okay. Yeah, so that would be awesome to try those out. But so uh, they were there as Radical Dough specifically, and they were selling both their uh, homemade, and these are made in a home kitchen, mm-hmm. uh, glazed vanilla donuts, mm-hmm. and their chocolate chip frosted cookie cakes. Yes. Yes. And both of these things, beautifully made, it, just think like crisp, the donuts, think Krispy Kreme, only good <laughs> and, and vegan. They were the most perfect looking donuts. First of all, they were perfect looking. And we uh, didn't make it home without popping one of the boxes. It's open. true. It's true. We did have yeah, a we, donut we on got, the way home. We got as far as uh, Hamburg and I think I busted into one of those containers. No, really? We got to Silver Creek. Was it Silver Creek? It was oh, Silver Creek. We held out for quite a while then. Yeah. yeah. We got to Silver Creek before you broke out the donuts. Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, they really were fantastic. And I, I want to put 
forward that neither Christine nor I are big donut people. We're not. And, but these were really just unbelievably tasty. Like, I think each of us on our first bite just went, oh wow. my God. I think my first bite was, wow. You're right. Right? It was. Yours and was wow. Because they're super fluffy and lo- lots of glaze. I love that when yeah. there's lots of glaze. And I want to taste, because they say they also make a chocolate glaze. Yeah. And although I'm not a huge donut person, when I did, y- did get donuts, like my dad was a donut person. Uh-huh. And when I was younger, we would go to a Dunkin' Donuts that wasn't mm-hmm. too far from. And chocolate glaze was, was what, your thing? I, what I went for. Yeah. Either chocolate glaze or angel cream or whatever the filled ones i like the oh, filled boston ones cream boston cream yeah yeah um so i'm looking forward to trying their chocolate glaze too. oh absolutely yeah but this yeah. was just an incredible donut light fluffy a little bit crispy now jesse and jenny did tell us that we had to eat the donuts that day because <laughs> yeah. they wouldn't keep um <laughs> yeah. but they are not shelf stable and you don't want to hang on to them for too long but the thing is i had another one this morning I did too, with my coffee. And guess what? Just as good. Just as good. Yeah. Okay, sure. A little bit of the glaze had kind of oh, yeah. absorbed. It gets a little mushy. Into yeah. the cake. So it gets a little, so the texture changes a little bit. But the bit. taste was still there. And, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, if they tell you you can't have them on day two, they're completely wrong. And if they expected us to eat <laughs> eight donuts. Eight donuts. <laughs> There's no way we could eat eight donuts. Not without making between ourselves. Between the hours of 6 p.m. And we go to bed pretty early at 9, 9.30 p.m. Right. There's no way it's going to happen. Yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't going to happen. But no. these, these were really outstanding. And I certainly look forward to having them again. Yeah. Um, I also tried the cookie cake today, I which you I'm, have not. Yours I'm saving is still mine. out on the counter. Yeah, I'm yep. saving mine. But I did try the cookie cake as well. And I do love a good chocolate chip cookie. And this was a very nice chocolate chip cookie. Um, but it's like a cake. It had a cakey texture. Okay. Yep. So it looked like it was perhaps baked in a muffin tin. Like a muffin tin kind of situation yeah, like a muffin okay. tin um but it was kind of flat on the top um there was no like bulgy muffin top like you get with regular muffins right yeah none of that and um it was a lovely contrast between a, a semi-crispy outside and a really cakey inside Ooh. the flavor was lovely mm-hmm. and i'm not usually a big fan of frosted chocolate chip cookies because i find that the frosting can sometimes overpower like the pure sweetness of the frosting can sometimes overpower the flavor of the cookie. It's sure. like you lose the chocolate chippiness of it in right. favor of the frosting. Right. But I didn't find that to be true. The amount of frosting on the cookie cake was perfectly reasonable. It was not overdone. Um, it was beautifully designed. Yeah. Um, and it was really flavorful. So that's awesome. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to more of those too. Yeah. I wish them great success. Oh their, my gosh. Their packaging is fantastic. The ingredients are completely detailed right there on the packaging. It looks to me like they are ready to be in stores. Absolutely. Honest to God. Honest to God. Yes. They are ready. And the beautiful thing is that, you know, they are just starting out. Like mm-hmm. after we met them, we went and became followers of their Instagram and we were their third follower. <laughs> yeah. And we were so excited about that. Yeah. Um, you know, to meet them so early in their business development their journey yeah yeah so so excited um and they have a lovely website uh radical foods uh-huh. definitely recommend that you check it out um all of the ingredients in their donuts and chocolate chip cookie cakes are listed on the website yep. as well so you don't have to wonder what is going into these delicious baked goods and um you can see that the website is in progress as well you know so there's going to be an F- there's a, a pretty well developed FAQ section mm-hmm. um there's a recipe section that is coming soon oh that's in- that's Interesting. Yes, absolutely. Um, that they are, they might just be putting up some of their favorite recipes. And that to me is really exciting. That would be awesome. Yes, absolutely. And there's a bit about uh, Jesse and Jenny, which is great. And uh, yeah, so definitely check them out. Also, they have one of the cutest t-shirt designs I have ever seen. Yeah, they have some really cute merchandise. Really cute merch. And if you're looking for their merch, um, you want to go to redbubble.com and search for Vegan Earth by Radical Foods. Uh, This is a really adorable globe graphic with uh, slatted sunglasses. 
um, holding a donut and <laughs> it's just so cute. <laughs> like it's stupidly cute. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty creative. And, and, and by stupid, I don't mean stupid. I, you, I'm using yeah. it in a, yeah. It's, it's so cute. It's stupid. so cute. It's stupidly cute. Um, and the, the text is vegan for the earth, for the animals and for the donuts. I like that. <laughs> I really love it. And then it has, um, you know, Radical Foods, Buffalo, New York. So I absolutely love it. It's an adorable design. I can, I'm, I'm, I'm going to order one of these shirts. Like, who am I kidding? Like you need another shirt. You're becoming the new me. I am becoming the new you. I, but I'm pretty much in our relationship known as the t-shirt hoarder. It's true. And I have t-shirts that are probably older than most of you listening. This is true. Um, I mean, I have t-shirts from, you know, the eighties, like from concerts I went to and stuff like that. Yeah. And every, you know, once a year I go through and I purge, mm -hmm. but still because we're constantly reacquiring t-shirts. Yeah. It's like they never go away. Now, Sam is her t-shirt collection is getting really big. It's getting, it's getting pretty substantial. Yeah. I mean, and I do need to do a purge. I do need to go through and, and get some, get rid of some of the ones that I don't wear. Donate yeah. the ones that I don't wear. Yeah. All of my t-shirts now are vegan oriented. Yeah. It seems so. Every single one. Yeah. You know, so any vegan organization that I support, I buy a t-shirt. Yeah. You know, because I figure it helps them with advertising. I certainly wear our own t-shirts. Um, and also in my job, because it's rather a physical one, you know, I tend to sweat and I also do yoga first thing in the morning mm -hmm. and I'm also taking stage combat this semester, which I'm very excited about. Yeah. So I'm going to be doing a lot of sweating. And so I'm going to go through two or three t-shirts a day. Yeah. And so if I don't want to be doing laundry every day, I need to have a substantial supply of t-shirts. Yeah. So um, let's just say that Sam is getting three different vegan messages out during her day, <laughs> which right. is awesome. That's right. And it just varies from day to day, which yeah. ones, it is, you know, which yeah. ones they are. So, you know, it could be <laughs> Mockingbird Farms and Radical Foods uh -huh. and the Vegan Zombie all in one day. Yeah. You know, yeah. Why not? Yeah. It's pretty awesome. Because also then, you know, my students will sometimes ask questions related to my t-shirt and I'm always happy to have those conversations. Sure. Yeah, so the donuts, great. The donuts I, are like great. Like I said, I'm saving my um, cookie cake, and I'll probably have it after we podcast. And I'll report back on that. I'll, maybe I'll put something in the show notes. So the next people that we met. Okay, yes. The next people that we met, um, lovely, lovely people by the name of Lise and Josh. And they are the owners of Rava Tea and Gifts. Mm -hmm. And they had some beautiful hand-drawn stickers. And so we bought several stickers from them. And they also do custom sticker designs. Yes. And so we were talking on the way home. And we were so impressed with the designs that they were presenting at the pop-up that we thought, you know, maybe... Maybe once in a while we should do a limited edition hand drawn yeah. sticker I agree. Uh, for Compassion and Cucumbers and that to support through somebody Rava else. Designs to support somebody else's business. Yeah, to support somebody else in the community. Oh, and I wanted to throw in there before you go any further about um, their products and stuff like that. Oh, yes. That Josh is a musician. Uh, actually, they're both music musicians. I think Liz says she plays the violin, and I think we missed her playing earlier Oh, okay. in the day. But he was playing um, some acoustic guitar songs mm -hmm. and stuff, and they, he sounded great. It really created a nice vibe, yes. vibe in yes, there. Yes, it know, did. So. Yeah, he was playing when we came in, mm -hmm. actually. So that was yep. pretty awesome. Um, and so they were selling stickers, and what else did they have going on? Because I know it says Rava Tea and Gifts. Um, I yeah, don't think they were selling teas. They didn't have any of their teas. I think they're still working on the packaging and stuff oh, okay. for them. Got it. Yeah, but and I think they originally started this whole idea because they give handmade gifts at Christmas to mm -hmm. their family. Yeah, and enjoyed the process so of, much that of, you have creating the you know the wrapping for them mm -hmm. and whatever that they decided to do it as a business. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's absolutely great. Yeah. And so we wish them all the best as well. And they were actually sharing a table with Jennifer and her daughter, Nevea. Uh -huh. um, Nevea was selling some absolutely wonderful string bracelets. Yes. Um, and some of them were up to 14 strands of 
of embroidery Yeah, cloths, they were really pretty. They were really pretty. So I bought a bracelet from Nevea, who, um, as I walked into the room, looked very, very familiar. And it turned out that Nevea and Jennifer had bought a sticker from us at VegFest just the week before and uh, had inquired about a t-shirt, but we didn't have a size appropriate for Nevea. They were all yeah, too big. We do need to get a few youth sizes. Yeah. And so we're going to work on that. And as soon as we have that ready... Um, I'm hoping to have one for Nevea yeah. by the next Vegan Center pop-up market, which is October 29th. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, so, yeah, all in all, I thought it was a fantastic event. I just wish we had gotten there sooner. I do, too. And I wish that we, you know, had been able to meet more people there because people were starting to tear down mm-hmm. because we took the time, you know, to eat and everything. Right. So, um, yeah, next time we'll definitely get there sooner. Definitely. Well, I have a feeling next time we'll be among the vendors. Yeah, we might vend the next one. Who knows? Yeah, I think it'd be fun. Who knows? Yeah. So that was uh, at the Vegan Center, and they're located at 60 Broad Street in Tonawanda, New York. So check their website out. Yes. And they have a calendar up for when all of these great pop-up markets happen. Yes. And they also have a, a wonderful gift shop. Mm-hmm. There are loads of events mm-hmm. in between the pop-up markets, yep. classes and discussion groups and all kinds yep. of wonderful They have things. cooking classes and, and business classes. They have a uh, fully functioning uh, commercial kitchen that is solely vegan. Mm-hmm. So if you're somebody that maybe would want to put on a cooking class or something like that, definitely reach out to them about renting. Yeah, You can rent sure. that commercial kitchen by the hour. Mm-hmm. So um, it's really cool what Marcy's got going on there. It is. It's really great. So thank you, Marcy, for everything that you do for the Buffalo vegan community. I think we're just going to wrap things up. Let's move on to the housekeeping section. Well, housekeep away. Do you want to keep or... You want? It's up to you. Well, I'll start by saying uh, our next event, we're going to be up at the Burlington, Ontario Veg Fest. It's yeah. the first annual Burlington, Ontario Veg Fest. So so that's, that's exciting. Super exciting. Uh, so we'll be heading up there on Saturday. We will oh, not be vending. Canada. <laughs> Looking forward to being north of the border. Yes, yes. We haven't been north of the border since. November? November. Yeah, Yeah. it's been too long, really. And so uh, we're definitely looking forward to that. Um, As always, we will ask you to contribute to our Mockingbird fundraiser by going to our Buy Us a Coffee page. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's buymeacoffee.com backslash cucumbers. Each coffee is $5 and any contributions will be matched by us and Mm -hmm. then sent off to uh, Mockingbird Farm Animal Sanctuary. Um, And the deadline on on that is our episode 52. Yeah, episode so 52 only is only four episodes left. Yeah, we'll be the last chance to give to that fundraiser and then we'll probably pick a different uh, organization. We will pick a new organization. Um, yep. Yeah, because I feel at this point we're just kind of holding them the money hostage. Yes. And thank you so much to everybody that's already donated to our Walking Bird Farms fundraiser. Uh, again, it, it is at Buy Me a Coffee. Buy Me a Coffee.com backslash cucumbers. Yes. Yes. Um, what else is on there for? Well, you also have here that you would like to encourage people to support the Agriculture Fairness Alliance. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we, we spend a lot of time talking about food and fun things and stuff. We do. Um, but, you know, the important thing is, is the veganism, right? The important thing yes. is the animal liberation. Yes, the right? ethics. Absolutely. Um, we're ethical vegans. So that's the mo- really the most important thing to us. I wanted to encourage everybody to support Agriculture Fairness Alliance. They're a vegan lobbying, advocacy, and education group. And they what they do is they lobby to promote government subsidizing of vegan farmers so that all of your tax dollars aren't going to subsidize the animal agriculture industry. Right. Okay. So that's one of their main things that they lobby for. They lobby for a ton of other stuff. And you can see everything that they, all the work that they do on their website. Um, But lobbying groups need money. They really do. Lobbying takes a lot of money. Animal agriculture industry, they have millions and millions, billions. I was going to say. Really? Yeah. billions Billions of dollars to throw at politicians to skew votes in their direction. Oh, absolutely. And we, and our side has, you know, not a billion dollars. So, <laughs> yeah, so uh, reach out to their website. Look at what they do. Um, and if you like what they're doing, throw a little money their way. 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, because we might... can talk about we can talk the talk, but it comes up there. It comes to a point where we have to walk the walk, right? Well, sure. Yeah. I mean, although I would argue that simply by being vegan, one is an activist. Oh, well, sure. Absolutely. Yeah, but we need to do more to affect change. Well, certainly we do. And so, yes, contributing to organizations like this is very important when you are able to do so. Um, if you're wondering why the subsidization of vegan farmers mm -hmm. or plant-based farmers is so important, it's because that will allow... It will then create an incentive for perhaps farmers who are currently in the ag animal agriculture industry to shift mm -hmm. to uh, plant-based farming. Yes, and um, they also help with transitioning And they help farmers. with those transitions. So, yeah. um, you know, we all know that the animal agriculture industry is not going to disappear overnight. No. But the fact that there are organizations out there like the Agriculture Fairness Alliance who are working on helping to transition people away from it is really pretty phenomenal. Yeah. So, there we go. Yeah. So Did I say said. what you wanted me to say? Yes. Thank you. No I don't, problem. I don't know. My brain and my mouth are not communicating today for some reason. It's okay. We've both been unusually tired today. Yeah, we think know. it's the aftermath of Hurricane Lucy. Yeah. Two weeks with a teenager will do that to you. Yes. Um, okay. I want to tell everybody to also sign up for our newsletter on our website. You can sign up. It's right on the front page. Just put your email in there. And then every week you will get a lovely newsletter written by our Sam. That'd be me. Yes, about some of the things that we're doing, some of the books that she's reading, of uh, various... Uh, oh, yes. So many topics. So many topics. Yes. Um, yes. So I'm an avid reader, and one of the things that I want to add to the podcast at some point is a book review. Book reviews, yeah. Um, segment. Mm -hmm. And so frequently I'll, I'll manage to get through about a, a book a week. And, yeah. Um, so I want to be able to share those. Yeah, with there's you. A, so there's a lot of that. really great books out there on oh, veganism, so on great. on animal advocacy, on you know, on just uh, all kinds of intersectional justice issues. Yeah, yeah, just so many I good books. So it would be stuff. good to share what you're reading, and so people can look for those books themselves. Yeah, so I'm hoping to start that next week. Actually, yep. um, subscribe to our podcast on your podcast app if you like what you're hearing. Please. Subscribe and rate and review us if you can. If your podcast app has the ability to rate or write a review, that would be awesome. That really helps us become more visible to all the wonderful people like you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> share the show. If you like the show, share it. Um, you, if you want to share our social media stuff, that really helps to to boost our visibility. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think I think that's it. I think we're going to wrap up um, episode 48. Yeah. And, and until next week. Can you believe that, though? 48? I know. We, we've, yeah. It's we've, crazy. We've come a long way, baby. We really have. As they say. Mm. Yeah, we're coming up on a year. That's so awesome. It is awesome. And thank you so much to everybody that's been listening to us and supporting us because, you know. Couldn't do it without you. We, could, we really, I mean, we could. But we'd just be, you know, talking into the ethos. Ethos? Ether. Ether. Yeah. Ethos is a little different. <laughs> Like I said, my brain and my mouth <laughs> not work so good today. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you for listening. I hope you all have a great week, and we'll talk to you again uh, next Tuesday. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Love you all. Bye-bye. If you'd like to support the Compassion and Cucumbers podcast, you can go to buymeacoffee.com backslash cucumbers and buy us a cup of coffee. Thanks so much for listening and for supporting us in what we're doing. We're really having a good time with it. 